Hey, I'm Noodle Yeti. Today, we're taking the next step towards becoming a traffic managing guru. This time, looking at transports for both people and cargo. Yes, you heard right. We're tackling both these beasts in one go. Two for the price of one, so to speak. Why separate the videos when these two are practically two peas in a pod? Without understanding the ABCs of transportation we'll be talking about, your dear sims, tourists, and businesses will choose the scenic self-driven route. And while the sites might be nice, the traffic jams certainly won't be. So let's talk transportation. Just like road hierarchy, it's all about connecting the dots. You've got lower speed transits funneling people to their high speed counterparts and vice versa. The Sims, bless their heart, always opt for the quickest route. So it's on us to keep these options within a reasonable distance. The density of a region can also shake things up a bit, shifting where each transportation option sits on our imaginary hierarchy. By the way, if you, this is your first one and you're scratching your head about road hierarchy, do check out the video linked up in the upper right. My preferred strategy is to chalk out the intercity options first, our transportation highways, if you will. Once these are down, the rest falls into place, with high-speed transits reaching out to tourist hotspots or cozy residential areas. Now, some folks suggest keeping separate lines for these areas, but as my regular viewers know, I'm not the best at this game, so that theory is still up for debate, at least to me. Moving on, we've got our low-speed transits. These are the workhorses that get our sims within walking distances of their destinations. Just with this basic understanding, you can whip up transit systems that will keep your city flowing smoother than a hot knife through butter. But hold on to your hats, folks. If you're thirsting for more, we're about to dive even deeper. First up, we'll take a gander at the world of people movers, and then tackle the daunting domain of cargo movers. So buckle up, buttercup. Let's start at the top. To welcome tourists and new residents, you've got four main avenues. Buses, trains, harbors, and airports. They unlock as your city grows. Sort of like milestones in your city's development. Picture these as your highways, your key entry and exit points. From these mighty conduits, all other transportation forms branch out. A web of connectivity that starts and ends right here. Let's break it down, starting with buses. These guys are your real workhorses. They're versatile, able to trundle along any roadway network. There's a whole bunch of options for bus-only lanes or even exclusively bus roads to give them the VIP pass they need on their citywide tour. And the best part? You just need to plan where your intercity station goes. And here's a pro tip for you. Keep it within arm's reach of a highway. Just trust me on this one. Trains. Now, here's where we start getting into the real movers and shakers. These mechanical behemoths are the last of our intercity options with a network that you have to build yourself. They're hauling a, an even bigger crowd and at a really swifty speed too. Now, with trains you've got options. Fancy a ground level station or do you prefer elevated ones? Whatever floats your boat. It's all about how you want to design your city. But wait, there's more. You've also got to choose between having a bypass or going without. It's like choosing whether to have fries with your burger. It's totally up to you and depends on your city's dietary transportation needs. 
Next up, harbors. Here's where things get a bit salty, and I don't just mean because of the sea air. Harbors are the last la harbors are the last transport option with any kind of network requirement. But don't panic. You don't need to build it yourself, and well, I mean you can't. However, like stubborn sea barnacles, you can't move the existing network. So if you've got dreams of harbor placement in that perfect spot, you might need to do some strategic city planning. Now, depending on how far your harbors are from the map's edge, they can either zoom ahead of trains or end up trailing behind like a lost sea turtle. When it comes to capacity, harbors are more of a comic relief than a serious contender. A measly 100 passengers per boat. That's like comparing a family car to a train, which can easily carry over 400 passengers. But don't write off harbors just yet. Depending on their distance from the exit of the map, they can sometimes pull off a quick passenger swap faster than trains. It's like the old hare and tortoise race, except sometimes slow and steady just doesn't win the race. Lastly, we have airports. No matter where you plop these down, whether it's on a lush green field or a barren desert, the planes will take off and zip straight towards their destinations as if they have some hot date they can't be late for. They're a bit faster than the other options, making them more desirable. If speed is your game, airports are your dame, or dude, or, uh, well, whatever you prefer, I guess. But wait, good news, airport enthusiasts. The Airports DLC not only brings bigger and better airports, making Sims choose this option, the DLC's ticket prices are like a little love letter to your city's income. Now that we've got our intercity hubs locked down tighter than my gummy jar, it's time we consider the arterials, our high-speed, intracity options. Metros are the first ones to gate crash the party, followed by the dynamic duo, trains, and monorails. When planning these speedsters, I tend to think about who is going where. From my long and sometimes confusing journey in this guide series, I've learnt me a few things. Low-density residential areas are all about that industry life. High-density residential folks prefer universities and offices like moths to a flame. And tourists, well, they're here for the attractions, aren't they? However, as they say, the devil is in the details. Much like arterial roads, the more stops your line has, the more it resembles a tourist taking pictures rather than a racer in a marathon. Unlike roads though, sims are not all about that speed limit. They consider how long the total route will take, which includes the length of the route, the number of stops, even the travel time to the transit option all factor into their mental math. In one of my traffic experiments, I created a bus route and a metro route side by side. Both led to the same location. However, the metro took the scenic route with more stops. And guess what? The bus won the popularity contest. But hey, you can't blame them for preferring a more direct route, can you? Alrighty, let's get to our first unlocked arterial transit option, the metro. Think of these as the adaptable chameleons of the arterial world, with a host of placement options. Underground? Check. Ground level? Double check. Elevated? You bet. In the Transport Olympics, metros would win silver for speed. While they sprint as fast as trains, they tend to dawdle at stops. I guess they're enjoying the view. Yet sims still choose these over any other form of transit. Now here's the kicker. Metros are not a fan of sharing. They don't use existing road networks and instead 
demand their own space when placed on the ground or elevated. So if you are considering using metros, remember to include them in your city planning phase. It's like planning for a puppy. It might not seem like a big deal now, but boy do they need the space to run. Moving on to the cloud, <laughs> the cloud, the crowd pleaser trains. Unfortunately, they are a bit of a stickler for routine with only ground level or elevated stations in their playbook. And remember what I said about metros and not being fans of sharing? Trains took that to heart. They can't mingle with existing road networks either, forming crossings instead. They're like that friend who insists on bringing their own snacks to a potluck. So it's important to pencil in space for these railway prima donnas during your city planning stage. In terms of speed, trains share the podium with metros, but they spend less time admiring the views at stops. It's like they're always late for a meeting or something. But there's a tiny fly in the ointment. These speedsters sometimes have to share their tracks with cargo trains. And trust me, this causes traffic. The thing that we're trying to exterminate. But don't worry. Trains do have their redeeming qualities. Plus, they boast some pretty neat bridges and transport hub options thanks to our creative content creators. Because who doesn't love a bit of flair, right? Let's talk about monorails, the late bloomer of the arterial transit options. These guys are perfect for when your city planning turned out to be a bit impromptu. Monorails can swoop in and save the day, making the most of your existing road networks. In fact, monorails are quite the social butterflies, able to mingle with every road width, from solo track to six lane road options. And let's not gloss over their aesthetic appeal. Monorails bring that sparkle of Disneyland magic to your city, making your sims feel like every day's a holiday. But don't let their charming looks deceive you. Monorails come with their own baggage. They are the slowpokes of the arterial world, and their capacity isn't something to write home about. All right, we have tackled the arteries of our city, so now we're left with the conundrum of collectors. Now, if we're sticking strictly to the transit hierarchy, trams might end up in this category all on their own, as they do chug along faster than buses and sims take notice. But I'd say there's a different kind of local road in the transit world. Good old foot traffic. Yep, it's all about that stroll to the nearest bus or tram stop for our sims. So. When you're planning these stops, here's a few pointers. Ask yourself, how far are the sims walking to the nearest stop? How many stops are on the route? And most importantly, where are these routes leading? A short walk to higher forms of transit or places of interest like parks and schools can make all the difference. These factors can lure your sims onto your collector routes and keep them out of their cars. And here's a bonus tip for you. Running a route in the opposite direction on a loop can work wonders in getting even more sims to ditch their cars. Now that we've set the stage for collectors, let's spot the real stars of the show. Buses and trams. Then after that, we'll explore some of the more niche transit options, so stay tuned. First on the runway is the ever-reliable standard bus. It's no secret that these buses are the most versatile, using your existing road networks and offering an abundance of road options. And yes, the intercity option is included. Now, for the environmentally conscious city planner, we've got the eco-friendly buses for your local routes. They're the greener choice, producing less noise pollution than their standard counterparts. The trolleybus is a more finicky choice. While it requires a specific road type and lacks the capacity options of its standard sibling, it has a certain aesthetic appeal. 
those overhead wires create a definite big city vibe. It's something I see whenever I go to Los Angeles, the main city area with the skyscrapers. Plus, it trumps the eco-friendly and standard buses in terms of noise pollution, or rather, lack thereof. And finally, we have the sight seeing bus. While there's only one size option, you can adjust the ticket price directly from its route panel. These buses are primarily aimed at tourists, ferrying them from entry points to their chosen attractions. In light of this, I've been testing out sightseeing buses in tourism focused areas in place of regular buses. The jury's still out on the results, but one thing's for sure, it's a profitable venture. There is only one major downside to these though. Sometimes they take the stop literally, stopping up the whole route and world around them. And now let's move on to my personal favorite, trams. These transport powerhouses outpace both cars and buses, bringing speed and efficiency to your transport system. Trams also offer a variety of road options, including tram-only roads that double up as pedestrian paths, granting your citizens direct tram access. In terms of capacity, trams are up there with the monorail. They come in a range of sizes, so you can choose what suits your city best. With careful planning, your tram routes can become the epitome of smooth and efficient transit. There is, however, a flip side. Trams require specific roads, and they're not exactly quiet. The noise pollution they generate is on par with a standard bus. It's something to keep in mind when planning your urban paradise. And that, folks, wraps up our tour of the standard forms of public transportation. From the highways of intercity options to the collector and local roads of buses and trams, we have covered them all. But we're not done yet. We still have some niche options to delve into. These are the forms of public transit that serve specific purposes or function best in particular situations. We're talking about taxis, cable cars, ferries, blimps, and helicopters. First up, let's discuss taxis. Taxis in city skylines don't directly reduce traffic. And some might argue they're only good for a sense of realism. However, in my testing, I found they can play an important role in managing traffic flow. When I had observed Sims leaving the city or sorry, entering the city via the airport, I noticed some jumped onto the metro, some would wait for buses but then others would choose to drive. However, after I introduced taxis into the city, the number of Sims choosing to drive decreased. If taxis were nearby, many Sims opted to wait for a taxi, diluting the influx of vehicles just jumping onto the road. Conversely, if the taxi was too far away, fewer Sims chose to wait. They'd eventually just give up and drive instead. This indicates that taxis can help spread out the influx of tourists, reducing the immediate impact on your roads. But remember, patience is not a sim's strong suit. If they wait too long, they won't hesitate to pull out their own car and contribute to the condensed traffic flow. Now let's dive into our remaining niche options. Cable cars, ferries, blimps, and helicopters. These transport options specialize in bypassing geographical obstacles that could slow down road travel. Cable cars can handle steep inclines and mountain ridges, making them excellent for cities built on hilly terrains. They're also fairly low, well, at least I believe they're fairly low in noise pollution, so at least I don't hesitate to place them near residential areas. Next up are ferries. These are ideal for traversing rivers and large bodies of water, or canals. However, unless the ferry route is particularly desirable, you may need to enact the Prefer Ferries City policy to increase their usage. As for blimps and helicopters, these can essentially bypass 
any terrain. Blimps have a higher capacity but move slower, while helicopters are faster but carry about half the passengers. Or I think it's actually about two-thirds of the passengers. Interestingly, sims seem to favor the speed of the helicopters, even with their lower capacity. With this, we've covered all the options for moving people around your city. Now let's move on to the transportation of goods or cargo. Let's see how we can keep the commercial and industrial sectors of your city running smoothly. In city skylines, the options for intercity cargo transportation are trains, harbors, and airports. Sadly, when it comes to intra-city good movement, trains are the only other options besides trucks. They're instrumental in linking up distant industrial sectors that require each other's goods, or connecting industrial zones to commercial districts to supply goods directly. In the later stages of city development, harbors and airports with train access become available. These multimodal transport hubs greatly speed up the process of exporting, making them incredible, incredibly valuable assets for your city. So there we have it a comprehensive look at the transportation system in city skylines. Whether you're moving people or goods, it's important to strategize and utilize the available options to keep your city running smoothly. So in case you just wanted to jump to the TLDR, let's quickly recap what we've covered today. Transportation in city skylines follows a hierarchy similar to roads. We have intercity options, or highways, which includes buses, trains, harbors, and airports, which brings sims and tourists into your city. Intra-city transit options, or arterials, encompassing monorails, trains, and metros, the speedy pathways through your city. And collectors, the local transit options, like buses and trams, the final step to taking those people where they want to go. We also discussed niche options which serve specific purposes such as taxis, which help regulate traffic flow in those big waves of people getting off of trains, harbors, and airports. Cable cars, ferries, blimps, and helicopters, which help overcome geographical challenges within your city. For cargo transport, we have the intercity or highway options, which include trains, harbors, and airports to export and import the goods you need, while trains also serving as the city's cargo arterials, taking your goods long distances across your city directly to where they need to go. And that is the bare bones basics of transportation in city skylines. The efficient and smart application of these transport options will keep your city running smoothly, improve its economic strength, and make it a joy for your citizens to live in. I hope you found some of this information useful for your current or future cities. If you did find it helpful or enjoyed this guide, I'd really appreciate if you could give this video a like, leave a comment with your thoughts, or subscribe to the channel for more content. Thank you for your viewership. It does mean a lot to me, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.